What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode. Today, we are sitting down with the founder and CEO of Deloon, Mimi. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I am so grateful you're here. I feel like this conversation is probably well overdue, just yes. knowing that we're in the menstrual wellness space together. So, you know, it's great to have you here. Yeah, I'm so happy to. I've been looking forward to this. We had a chat, I want to say like a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. where we were just, you know, sharing all of our origin stories around why we got into menstrual wellness in the first place. And that really left a mark on me. So I'm really excited to bring it full circle and see what we've been learning in the meantime. Yeah. Well, before we get into all that goodness, I have a question for you. And that is, yes. what period of life are you currently in and what are you loving about it? Mm, I love this question. Um, let's see. What comes to mind right away is being in my femme era of life. Yes. I have previously been kind of a tomboy, maybe not fully tomboy, but, you know, definitely open to different gender expressions of myself. And that's been a really important part of the Deloon brand is welcoming all gender um, identities and expressions into the menstrual wellness space. Um, but lately, I don't know what's gotten into me. I'm very much feeling a woman, um, which is kind of a cheesy thing to say at 29, but um, I think it's maybe related to starting to dance. I joined some Latin dance groups and the gender expression in some of these dances is very femme and it just has me um, in a different era. And so when I'm ovulating, I am just, you know, I'm acting different. I'm doing my hair differently. I'm just leaning into that feminine energy, whatever that might mean to you could look different, but for me, it feels really fun. Um, and it's kind of ironic because, you know, the peak of that feeling I get during ovulation, which I think of as my inner summer, and here we are in the dead of winter, but I don't know, that's just how things are lining up for me right now. And I'm, I'm letting it happen. I am so obsessed with this answer because <laughs> I'm feeling it right now like I really don't know what has gotten into me but like embracing that like femi fatale energy like yes. I don't know I'm like let's use it like why not right so, like, I love that we're in alignment there but my first question for you that's not really like cheesy it's more about you and your period so you know mm. being the founder that you are what was your period like prior to, you know, becoming a founder? And what was that relationship like? I mean, you and I have talked about this before, but it was really the dark days for me. And I know you have a similar story where we just grew up with so much pain that was suppressed. Yeah. And I didn't even realize the extent to which this pain, this monthly pain was affecting my life until I was well into my 20s. But you know, I got my period at 12. It hurt, mm -hmm. like really hurt. <laughs> no one prepared me for this. And like, God bless my mom. She didn't have any education growing up around how to feel good about your period, how to take care of your cycle, what's going on with your hormones. So she wasn't able to pass that on to me. And so many of us just model how we take care of our bodies after our mothers or whoever our role model was at that time. Mm -hmm. So I went into that pipeline of just like pretending it was fine, not asking questions, not finding community. Um, if I had to miss school, I would just say I had a stomach ache and skip the day and I didn't have anyone to talk to about it. Also, this belief that that was, you know, normal or that's, you know, that's just what I should be doing is hiding it, covering it up um, and just kind of grinning and bearing it which was not a fun time. So I would end up missing school pretty regularly growing up um, because of my period pain. And then of course, the cherry on top was the PMS that started to hit me with really like disorienting mood swings um, where you, if you're not literate in how your body responds throughout your cycle, you think you're going crazy. Like mm -hmm. for me, I just, I couldn't keep up with feeling in pain one day and then feeling really low and irritable and fatigued the next. There were, you know, a week or two of my cycle where I felt normal and like myself. 
So it really wasn't sustainable for me. And it reached a climax when I was in college. And I, again, was having trouble keeping up with the labs and classes that I needed to attend um, that my classmates who didn't have a cycle were fine with. Mm -hmm. So it just felt like I was trying to run a race with my shoelaces untied, you know, and kept having to stop and deal with this. So yeah, <laughs> that's, that was what my period was like before. Yeah. One of the things I always say to people is like, if your period was your lover, what would it say about your relationship? And nine times mm. out of 10, most people are like toxic and you like, you yeah. and I have very similar like backgrounds with our cycles, where it's just kind of like, yeah. like, and as a runner or a retired runner now to hear mm. you say it's like running a race with your shoelaces untied I'm like oh god right? like you get nowhere okay so bring us yes. up to speed with what that defining moment was for you to create such an incredible brand and like bring on a team Thank I got you. to talk to Claire before so that's why I'm asking yes. now but like you know just kind of like take us through that yeah um, well, it has definitely been a wild journey, and I, I don't know if there was one defining moment. I know what my breaking point was, though. I had this long lab session. Um, it was like a four-hour lab, and I needed to go and finish a project from start to finish, and you're graded on that. So you can't just leave in the middle, but of course, I get my period in the middle. And for me, at the time, I was just you know relying on taking time off or taking painkillers to get through it. I was also on and off all kinds of birth control for the purpose of suppressing my period, um, which is a rabbit hole that a lot of us go down. It wasn't really an informed choice for me. It was just like, like you said, this toxic relationship of jumping from one Band-Aid solution to another. So yeah, during that lab, I just broke down and couldn't finish the experiment, was like doubled over in the corner, like crying and trying to hide it from the TA and from the other students, which is kind of bizarre in retrospect. Like if you had an allergic reaction or if you suddenly threw up, like you wouldn't be hiding it and pretending like it's not happening, but I was pretending like it wasn't happening and it really ruined the whole day. And um there was this added layer of like disappointment in myself that I was trying to unpack. Uh, so at that point, I, I really made a turn in my life and I tried to figure out what was not serving me. And what I learned was relying on all these painkillers was personally not serving me. Super glad they exist. But when I was kind of dosing them like it was my job, you know, a handful every single month at the same time, chronically, uh, it was taking a toll on my body. And I experienced acute side effects from that. Not everybody does. Um, in retrospect, I'm kind of grateful because a lot of those side effects that I'm sure you're aware of with painkillers can be long term and you don't notice it until it's it's been a while. So I was curious about alternatives. I was curious about my relationship with my period. Like I said, like, what is this layer of shame that I feel? Where did this start? And how do I get through this tangle of emotions and really get to the root of all these problems? So yeah, that's where I started. It was uh, at the end of college that I kind of made this commitment to myself and that's when I joined forces with my original co-founder, Courtney, who you also know, who is a brilliant, brilliant dietitian. So she joined the team early on. Um, it was all just, you know, an idea in my mind, a, a sparkle in my eye, if you will. And she was crazy enough to join in and just, you know, go down this rabbit hole with me of doing a really, really thorough review of all the clinical research on dysmenorrhea and on PMS and figuring out the facts. Okay, what has actually worked? What's been proven to be safe and effective in clinical studies? Uh, what's available on the market? And we found that a lot of natural ingredients have been proven safe and effective for the exact symptoms I was really struggling with. And I was just so confused, like, why why don't I see this in the market? Now, this was like six, seven years ago. 
So a lot of progress has been made. There are so many cool brands trying to spread the word about different ways of healing our cycles, Mm -hmm. embracing natural ingredients, as long as they are the right ingredients at the right dosages. There's a lot of great truth in that. And like, I feel like we're in a little bit of a period renaissance. So it's (laughs) right. It's been so exciting to come up with that and you know be part of this wave of healing that so many of us are going through and I think that was what really spurred me to just dive in become a founder do this crazy thing of like pitching and fundraising and building a team and quitting my day job and you know it really escalated quickly but I was so spurred to do that because I felt like this wave had to happen Mm -hmm. and it was super overdue. And, you know, I have three younger sisters and they're always in my mind and I just couldn't accept the possibility of them going through exactly what I went through and future generations continuing this cycle of pain. So yeah, I was really excited to break the cycle. Oh my gosh. You said so much good stuff. One, (laughs) we are in a period renaissance. I remember talking to you, I think it was in November and I was just like, you know, everyone and their mother has a period product right now. And like, they really do. And I say that sarcastically, but also being hyper aware, like I'm one of those people who's just like, I only like good products, which brings me to a few of yours. Okay. (laughs) You know, we need to talk about it because So we all know I'm obsessed with steady mood. One of the main reasons is I love the use of rhodiola and saffron. Yes. Um, And just like a hot tip for anybody like tuning in and listening. I'm yeah, we both, I I literally just (laughs) finished talking about this on TikTok. So I can't believe you just said that statement. Oh my gosh. Um, (laughs) But it sounds so ridiculous. And like, but you can't escape it. We gotta be on TikTok. (sighs) If brands aren't there, I'm like, just get there. Like, be there just now. Instagram's not. It's a headache. Just have your Instagram, but spend your time nurturing on TikTok. Yep. But I digress. Working on it. Yeah. So on your website, one of the things I've noticed, I think you all call the blog, like, the journal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of research that is already there. Like, hey, this is the yes. study we've referenced. So, like, for anybody who doesn't know your product line, anybody who doesn't understand traditional Chinese medicine and things like that, why was that pulled into the brand? Mm. Like that natural thing, so important for you. I mean, we've kind of touched on it, but like, let's talk more. Yeah. Thank you for asking that. I think the ironic answer is that natural wasn't important to me going into this. I was not someone who knew about herbs or traditional Chinese medicine or Ayurveda or any any kind of natural medicine when I started this journey seven something years ago. Um, What I did care about was safety and efficacy. Mm -hmm. And I just went in with a completely open, curious mind. Like there has to be a better solution than powering through it or taking all these pharmaceuticals. And so, like I said, my my co-founder Courtney and I just we're really curious about what studies had been done. And we just happened to find that the most evidence-based solutions for period pain and PMS happen to be natural ingredients. And they happen to be, spoiler alert, all of these herbs, minerals, and vitamins that people have been using for a long time, especially the herbs. They, a lot of these herbs, um, like fenugreek, um, rhodiola saffron have historical or traditional uses in different indigenous cultures of you know being associated with women's health or with menstrual health, reproductive wellness. And I think the science is just catching up to be able to validate that. So I'm not saying that all you know ancient remedies have the same efficacy, but we went in and just looked at the data and, chose the ingredients that have really stood the test of what we consider a rigorous clinical study so um it's it's been really fascinating like in the last even 10 years to see uh the world of western medicine start to wake up to the fact that plants are really powerful and they are medicine and they are not a lesser medicine than drugs they are not 
weaker. It just depends on how you're using them and the dosages that you're using. So when we were formulating, we made sure to, as much as possible, meet the same dose that was used in these clinical studies. Because it's one thing to say you use evidence-based ingredients, but okay, how much are you putting in your product? Um, and so that's why our supplements are really potent is because we try to match those therapeutic doses whenever possible. And that's something like I really appreciate. I think, you know, part of me appreciates it as an informed consumer, right? But I also appreciate mm -hmm. it as a practitioner because like so many brands don't know these things. And like, just to hear yeah. you say like, for me, I wasn't really walking in, like trying to do this, but the research supported it. It just like makes me really happy. And I, I think anybody who is coming into contact with you all, it definitely will like appreciate that. I guess for me, mm -hmm. you know, cause I'm very, and I always have some type of bias. I want to know <laughs> what is your favorite product that you all have formulated so far? Ooh, I know. I mean, Crampade has to be my lifesaver. So Crampade is our fast acting supplement for period cramp relief specifically. And it's my favorite because it's the first place that we started. My personal most urgent problem was the pain because like I said, it was literally keeping me from doing what I needed to do in this world. And sometimes it would keep me from sleeping. I'd wake up in the middle of the night just crying. It was really terrible. And I needed something that would stop those cramps in the moment uh, that wasn't going to cause me other unnecessary side effects. So discovering these incredible herbs, Dong Kwai, ginger, fenugreek, calendula, that are just so powerful. Like if you look at the research, it's really, really incredible. And some of them have gone head to head and with painkillers in clinical studies and been proven to be just as effective. Uh, with fewer side effects. So yeah, that got me really excited and of course, very curious about herbal medicine in general. And, and I've never looked back since then. But yeah, I think Crampade was my first baby and the the formulation that allowed me to like live a normal life again and open up space to not be dreading my period every month. And that really started a chain reaction for me because Steady Mood was our first, our second formulation after Crampade. And I think you can kind of feel the evolution of how we were thinking about our formulations because Crampade is that immediate relief, right? It works in less than an hour for most people. Um, and then Steady Mood is like, okay, once, once you're calm and you're not in pain, you can start to think about your cycle health more holistically and be proactive. So that's kind of our approach is like meet people where they are, stop the pain, and then help them to think forward three or six cycles and really start to plan out what moves are they going to make to nourish their body, to help produce the hormones that they need to on their own. And that's where steady mood comes in to kind of have that proactive holistic approach. I love that. Okay. Now we need to talk about my other one that I love. Yes. Energy flow. And the reason, like, I remember the first time I tasted it, I was like, just coming off of caffeine mostly, mm -hmm. you know, like I was just coming off of having like lattes way too much. And I was just like, Same. oh, this is nice. This is refreshing, <laughs> but this is like grounding. When yeah think about like the person who uses all of the products mm -hmm. how do you picture that individual like what do they look like what are they feeling like you can obviously tell us what you're feeling but like when you think of your customer or mm. like the girl on the couch in the satin robe you know yes. drinking her tea like what is that individual like and like what do you want them to feel mm, that's such a cool question I always have our customer very uh, like personally sketched in my mind. I can picture her. I can hear her. I know the types of things that she's curious about because I do talk to our customers quite frequently. We have a, an inner circle where um, folks can give me feedback and ask questions and really deepen their menstrual health journey. But um, our kind of archetype for our core Dune customer is... 
uh, the desperate hunter. So this is what we call her. We nicknamed her Holly um, just because we like having a nickname. And Holly is a desperate hunter because like you and like me, she had some breaking point in her life where something was just not working out with her cycle anymore. Maybe it was a bad event in a doctor's office where she didn't feel heard. Maybe it was an adverse reaction she had to a certain medication. Maybe she like was bleeding so much that she bled through her pants one day and it really left a mark on her. Like we all have these triggering experiences. It's way more common than you might think to reach that breaking point. And it typically happens in your 20s. I yeah. that's just what I found. And so by the time she comes and finds Deloon, whether it's through our social media education or through our journal articles online, she has so many questions and she's so skeptical. And I love that about her because I was there too. Like I said, I didn't come into this from a specific um, like bias towards natural or preference for that. I came in just needing to solve my problem. And it was through that skepticism that I was able to really look closely and see how powerful natural medicine is and holistic care for your cycle really is. And so I'm just, I love bringing her on that journey and just saying, look, I know where you are. I know you're jaded and exhausted and skeptical AF because there are a lot of supplements that do not actually contain what they say they contain or they don't meet the potency standards on their label so you know you're not going to have the best results with every supplement you might try and I understand that skepticism that they're coming in with so it's just meeting them with education and then also having something for everyone like you mentioned we have energy flow if you just need a little boost during your cycle and you're trying to avoid caffeine because caffeine can make period symptoms worse as we now know Um, or if you are you know trying to stop the pain we have cramp aid for you if you are trying to really take control of your whole cycle health and move forward proactively we have steady mood for you and I really want to expand the line to keep you know supporting these different trigger points that folks have Um, Another one that we hear a lot that we're trying to target next is bloating or digestive issues that can often come with your cycle. So yeah, just trying to meet her where she is in all her curiosity and all her skepticism. I love that so much because like I am, I tell people like straight up, like I get so many emails from brands. I will go on their website, look at like one, their copy, and then I look at the product and the ingredients and I'm like, no. What I find is with the brands that I do like, there's this whole element of knowing how curious your consumer is, Mm -hmm. providing that value because like a desperate hunter, like, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm like a hunter, but I, I am like, you know, really like, you know, you think you were one. What about Barry? Like five years ago when you were starting years ago was just inquisitive like that's really Mm. what it was yeah Um, someone had mentioned the book woman code to me Mm -hmm. and was like I think you would love this but also I could see you being a doula and that Mm. was kind of this catalyst for me to kind of learn more about women's health I was just like I mean whatever like I I didn't really because I was in pain but I was like everybody else I was using over-the-counter painkillers like everybody yep. else. Now, yep. I have no pain, which is great. But in addition to that, like, there's also no painkillers in my house unless it's a period mm. product that I can use another way, which brings me to my wow. next question. So yes. I'm, like, very much so against the over-the-counter painkillers as much as possible, like, within reason. Mm-hmm. Is yeah. there another way to use different products? Like, so, for instance, let's say for... Um, somebody who has sore muscles, do you think cramp aid, like they're not on their period, but like, do you think cramp aid would be good? Or if they have a headache, like, what do you, how else can people use your product? I love that. Yes. I think that we market towards these symptoms that we originally designed them for, but the reality is their power is even further reaching than that. So cramp aid in particular, I 
personally use it for any kind of muscle spasm or cramps that I'm having because when you look at the ingredients, it's just really powerful anti-inflammatories and anti-spasmodics. So, um, you know, Dong Kwai is a really powerful muscle relaxer. Same with magnesium. Um, we have ginger, which is a great natural anti-inflammatory. So all of these things are going to be incredible for, let's say you sprained your ankle or you have random cramps after going on a run. Mm -hmm. Like they definitely will help for that. We just selected the specific herbs, vitamins, and minerals that have been shown and studied in menstruating people specifically. So it is designed, of course, with that lens. But you don't have to have a cycle even to take cramp aid and feel the benefits um, because you will definitely feel that that potent anti-inflammatory effect. I think that's just like me wanting to normalize that you can utilize what's going to make yeah. you good. Yes, whenever throughout your cycle like I know for me if I have one too many cocktails I always go to my supplement cabinet yes who do I want to try today because like I do every now and again get a headache I don't really get hangovers but I know the next morning my body's gonna feel sluggish so yes should I take something tonight oh I love that you know like because that's part of our like lifestyle and I think a lot of people don't if you don't explicitly say you can use something this way, then mm-hmm. most people don't have that association, which is yeah, why it, I'm- It's a really good point. Um, yeah, but- and I think this is where I would just like recommend that folks get really curious about the ingredients because yeah. once you start learning about all the things one ingredient can do, you can mix it and match it to your lifestyle and take that cramp aid before your hangover or- even steady mood, like it has so many multi-symptom benefits. I'm just looking at the label now and it has 44% your daily value of iron. That's incredible for anemia. That's incredible if you get lightheaded, um, you know, and then zinc can be helpful with hormonal acne. We have rhodiola and saffron can be great for cravings. There's all kinds of other benefits that you're going to feel. Uh, beyond having a steady mood. So definitely I would encourage folks to get curious about ingredients. There's a lot of info about individual ingredients and how they work on our website. So if you go to the journal at deloon.co, all kinds of information if you want to nerd out there. And when she says nerd out, she really does mean that yes. because so for me with steady mood, because that's like my go-to one, just yes. because personally, like if I'm not in the mood, like something needs to like bring me back yeah. down through, right? But also it's mood and anxiety and overwhelm is something that I'm constantly being bombarded with in my DMs. So I just target that. I remember yeah. being like saffron. Mm-hmm. Really? Because I'm used to it when I'm having like my Mediterranean or like Middle Eastern food, like right. you know, my Indian food, like those spices coming out is very normal but to see it in a formula I was like yes a second like I thought this was a flavor profile I know no I think saffron is one of the most underrated therapeutic ingredients because the research in recent years has been really really powerful for mood stability and also for cravings like I mentioned it's just really helpful with you know satisfying your appetite and you know if you have a therapeutic dose, we have hundreds of milligrams of saffron extract in here. So that's part of why this is a premium supplement because these are pretty specialty you know, ingredients, but we really, really believed in the research behind saffron and think that it should be m- way more mainstream because it is incredible for mood and you can take it on a daily basis. You know, it's not something that people always think to supplement with but just like with rhodiola it can be an incredible adaptogen oh my gosh okay I'm not going to keep you too much longer but I do have a question for all the girlies who are in their healing girl era yes okay that's like everybody on TikTok right now I know like I I literally filmed a video talking about this healing but it just like this brought this to the forefront of my mind where would you tell them to start with your products like what is the one where you're like I think everybody needs this or I really just like where would you tell them what would no matter what their symptom is where would you want them to start yeah 
Well, we actually made a quiz on our site for exactly that question, because I don't think I would say, okay, everyone start with this product. I would say everyone start with whatever is causing you the most anxiety. And for me, that was the pain because that was really disrupting my life. For you, I know the mood is a huge issue and you always talk about how steady mood is part of that ritual for you. And I think that's what I would encourage folks to do who are on their healing girl journey is just be really introspective, figure out what is the biggest disruption in my life. Is it my skin, my mood, my sleep, whatever? Um, learn a little bit about the ingredients or allow Deloon to teach you about the ingredients or allow Barry to teach you about the ingredients and then start there. So yeah, hopefully the quiz on our homepage will be really helpful for folks. It just kind of ask you, how's your period? What's the worst symptom for you? What do you typically do right now to deal with that? And sometimes the answer is nothing. Actually, pretty often the answer is nothing, which breaks my heart because everyone is just kind of powering through and putting up with it in one way or another. But, you know, the body keeps the score. And I think this is becoming more common knowledge that you can't just run away from these symptoms. They're going to pop out somewhere else. And so start your healing journey now. Your body will thank you. And just start with what needs the most urgent attention. I love that answer. Okay. Three more questions. And I yes. promise these are like really good. So one, I love it. where can everyone connect with you all become a part of the community? Where's your favorite place to hang out? Like, tell Ooh. us where we can find you. Yes. Well, right now, my favorite place to hang out is Instagram. We have a pretty engaged community there. And I think that's been building for years. We've done a lot of education there. So definitely give us a follow at Deloon Care on Instagram and you will not be disappointed. You will be bombarded with education and some fun content uh, relating to periods. And I hope that you really feel seen uh, because there's a whole world of people, I promise, that are going through what you're going through. And that is a really important part of a healing journey to connect with other people in your situation as you grow together. So definitely follow us there. But like you said, I'm also trying to get more on TikTok. So actually right after this, I'm trying to plan out um, a little space that I can record daily videos of all of these burning questions that we've collected over the years, because we have just such a wealth of what people are wondering, especially with our SEO, like with our journal, we try to target uh, Google search phrases that are the most prevalent. So one of these phrases was like, why are my period cramps so bad all of a sudden? Mm. That's just one example of like the different ways that people are thinking about navigating their period and the different ways they're experiencing, experiencing symptoms pop up seemingly out of nowhere. There's a lot to unpack within that. So we are trying to answer those burning questions in more short form content in case you don't want to read the journal. We're trying to bring it to you in TikTok videos. So stay tuned for that and definitely follow us there as well. I believe our handle is Deloon Care on TikTok as well. And then the website is Deloon Care. The website is Deloon.co. Okay. Deloon.co. Okay. Yeah. My last question. Well, no, nope, two more. This one is a fun one. Okay. What are you currently doing or practicing to perfect your period right now, whether it's your Ooh. physical period or the period of life you're in? Like what, what's this yes. routine like? Ooh. Um, so it's interesting that you just brought up cycle syncing because even though I've been in this space for years, I am kind of just figuring out how to really incorporate cycle syncing into my own life. And I think I'm sure you can relate to this, but being an entrepreneur and being you know, someone who your work depends on your own initiative, you're pretty hard on yourself and kind of don't let yourself take a break sometimes, which is not practicing what we preach, right? We need to rest during the luteal and menstrual phases. It's just a must. And so I have been trying to be more conscious of that. And one thing that has actually helped me with that is dance. So I started Latin dance um, about a year ago, and it's really been a beautiful journey for me to just have another creative outlet, another form of exercise, creativity, and social connection because it's all partner dancing. 
Um, but I guess it's really made me more conscious of my cycle because I notice how differently I'm dancing during different phases and like what different energy I bring, what different expressions I'm bringing depending on how I feel. And like I, I mentioned, like the femme energy really coming out in my ovulatory phase and um, follicular phase. So that's been just really fun to notice and lean into and yeah, try to uh, plan a little bit for that, like plan some rest days, plan some big meetings or big activities during those higher energy parts of my cycle. I love that so much, but it's of course like it's partially biased because I'm a cycle sinking like queen. I know that's I know. my thing. But you know, recently I've kind of redefined the way that I do it, and that's based off of one the period of life I'm in. Mm-hmm. Two, just seeing like what is really practical for people now that the world has sped up again. Mm-hmm. Now that there's yeah. kind of that, like I think we had that. <sighs> like you know and now everybody's like turn up like let's yeah so I'm noticing like the slower season of cycle syncing has changed so much so yeah hearing that but my last question for you is you know do you have anything else you want to say anything we missed like you know the floor is yours oh I appreciate that just thank you so much for the time and space and energy to be able to spread this education I really believe that the work you're doing and the work that all of us in this space are doing is uh, it's a justice issue for me. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think it's ridiculous that we have been told or socialized to believe that our cycles are shameful, that our cycles are a burden, that they're not supposed to be a certain way. Cycles can look so many different ways and that's really beautiful to me. And I know you're the cycle syncing goddess. I'm just getting into that. I feel like I'm just scratching the surface of all the cool ways to explore that. So yeah, I would just say if you're starting this journey, know that you're not alone and know that you've probably been told some lies that sounds pretty harsh but you know you've probably yeah we've all been messaged um whether explicitly or inexplicitly like subliminal messaging when we're in school that our period is dirty or that our period is not something that we need to talk about um it's gonna take a while to unpack that and unlearn some of those messages but keep going because we are all going through it together and I think we can have a lot of fun with it on the way and keep making our our healing girl content and (laughs) uplifting each other awesome well thank you so much for being here I am so grateful and guys don't forget to check out the loon but specifically check out steady mood because a lot of y'all be in a mood yes (laughs) 